You might remember from course one that there are eight security domains or categories identified by CISSP. Security teams use them to organize daily tasks and identify gaps in security that could cause negative consequences for an organization and to establish their security posture. Security posture refers to an organization's ability to manage its defense of critical assets and data and react to change. In this video, we'll discuss the focus of the first four domains, security and risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, and communication and network security. The first domain is security and risk management. There are several areas of focus for this domain, defining security goals and objectives, risk mitigation, compliance, business continuity, and legal regulations. Let's discuss each area of focus in more detail. By defining security goals and objectives, organizations can reduce risks to critical assets and data like PII or personally identifiable information. Risk mitigation means having the right procedures and rules in place to quickly reduce the impact of a risk like a breach. Compliance is the primary method used to develop an organization's internal security policies, regulatory requirements, and independent standards. Business continuity relates to an organization's ability to maintain their everyday productivity by establishing risk disaster recovery plans. And finally, while laws related to security and risk management are different worldwide, the overall goals are similar. As a security professional, this means following rules and expectations for ethical behavior to minimize negligence, abuse, or fraud. The next domain is asset security. The asset security domain is focused on securing digital and physical assets. It's also related to the storage, maintenance, retention, and destruction of data. This means that assets such as PII or SPII should be securely handled and protected whether stored on a computer, transferred over a network like the internet, or even physically collected. Organizations also need to have policies and procedures that ensure data is properly stored, maintained, retained, and destroyed. Knowing what data you have and who has access to it is necessary for having a strong security posture that mitigates risk to critical assets and data. Previously, we provided a few examples that touched on the disposal of data. For example, an organization might have you, as a security analyst, oversee the destruction of hard drives to make sure that they're properly disposed of. This ensures that private data stored on those drives can't be accessed by threat actors. The third domain is security architecture and engineering. This domain is focused on optimizing data security by ensuring effective tools, systems, and processes are in place to protect an organization's assets and data. One of the core concepts of secure design architecture is shared responsibility. Shared responsibility means that all individuals within an organization take an active role in lowering risk and maintaining both physical and virtual security. By having policies that encourage users to recognize and report security concerns, many issues can be handled quickly and effectively. The fourth domain is communication and network security, which is mainly focused on managing and securing physical networks and wireless communications. Secure networks keep an organization's data and communications safe whether on site or in the cloud, or when connecting to services remotely. For example, employees working remotely in public spaces need to be protected from vulnerabilities that can occur when they use insecure Bluetooth connections or public Wi-Fi hotspots. 
By having security team members remove access to those types of communication channels at the organizational level, employees may be discouraged from practicing insecure behavior that could be exploited by threat actors. Now that we've reviewed the focus of our first four domains, let's discuss the last four domains. Identity and access management, security assessment and testing, security operations, and software development security. The fifth domain is identity and access management, or IAM, and it's focused on access and authorization to keep data secure by making sure users follow established policies to control and manage assets. As an entry-level analyst, it's essential to keep an organization's systems and data as secure as possible by ensuring user access is limited to what employees need. Basically, the goal of IAM is to reduce the overall risk to systems and data. For example, if everyone at a company is using the same administrator login, there is no way to track who has access to what data. In the event of a breach, separating valid user activity from the threat actor would be impossible. There are four main components to IAM. Identification is when a user verifies who they are by providing a username, an access card, or biometric data such as a fingerprint. Authentication is the verification process to prove a person's identity, such as entering a password or PIN. Authorization takes place after a user's identity has been confirmed and relates to their level of access, which depends on the role in the organization. Accountability refers to monitoring and recording user actions, like login attempts, to prove systems and data are used properly. The sixth security domain is security assessment and testing. This domain focuses on conducting security control testing, collecting and analyzing data, and conducting security audits to monitor for risks, threats, and vulnerabilities. Security control testing can help an organization identify new and better ways to mitigate threats, risks, and vulnerabilities. This involves examining organizational goals and objectives and evaluating if the controls being used actually achieve those goals. Collecting and analyzing security data regularly also helps prevent threats and risks to the organization. Analysts might use security control testing evaluations and security assessment reports to improve existing controls or implement new controls. An example of implementing a new control could be requiring the use of multi-factor authentication to better protect the organization from potential threats and risks. Next, let's discuss security operations. The security operations domain is focused on conducting investigations and implementing preventative measures. Investigations begin once a security incident has been identified. This process requires a heightened sense of urgency in order to minimize potential risks to the organization. If there is an active attack, Mitigating the attack and preventing it from escalating further is essential for ensuring that private information is protected from threat actors. Once the threat has been neutralized, the collection of digital and physical evidence to conduct a forensic investigation will begin. A digital forensic investigation must take place to identify when, how, and why the breach occurred. This helps security teams determine areas for improvement and preventative measures that can be taken to mitigate future attacks. The eighth and final security domain is software development security. This domain focuses on using secure coding practices. As you may remember, secure coding practices are recommended guidelines that are used to create secure applications and services. The software development lifecycle is an efficient process used by teams to quickly build software products and features. In this process, security is an additional step. By ensuring that each phase of the software development lifecycle undergoes security reviews, security can be fully integrated into the software product. For example, Performing a secure design review during the design phase, secure code reviews during the development and testing phases, 
And penetration testing during the deployment and implementation phase ensures that security is embedded into the software product at every step. This keeps software secure and sensitive data protected and mitigates unnecessary risk to an organization. Being familiar with these domains can help you better understand how they're used to improve the overall security of an organization and the critical role security teams play. Thank you.